with my boys. Um, it's always nice. Oh, hello, people. Puerto Rico, cool. Hello, Edwin. Hey, all. Oh, yeah, I can see uh, people at the side. Cool. Where are also people uh, coming in from? I can see a Firefly's AI Nooks Take a Rick. That's a, that's a name I have encountered before. Where's the chat? Portugal, cool. Milton Keynes, hello. You're not far from me. <laughs> uh, I'm from Twickenham, by the way. Uh, India, nice. Nigeria, Massachusetts, cool. Oh, that's where we are. Is it? Yep. Maybe it's someone in your office, Luke. That probably is. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> uh, Egypt, cool. Hello, Taryn. So VA, I don't know what VA is. Um, this is probably like a commonly known, ah, Virginia, cool. All right, we got, we got, some, we got some people here. Um, yep, yep. Let's go back to the start. All right, so hey, thanks for, for, for joining everyone. Um, I'm really excited about this is our second uh, Log Rocket meetup. Uh, second with John too, so uh, really glad he's here. Um, today we're, we're covering React structured data and SEO. Um, I'm really kind of thrilled about this one because uh, sneak peek, we are moving the Log Rocket blog over to be fully React, and uh, SEO is obviously pretty important for us. Ah, uh, cool, did not know. <laughs> I mean, finally. Um, <laughs> yeah, please feel free to. I'll be watching the chat. Uh, if you have any questions for John, we'll, we'll leave some some time after. Um, yeah, some some housekeeping stuff. We do have at least three more of these meetups coming up uh, in November, probably like more like six. Um, yeah, kind of a, across the gamut of what we normally cover on the blog. You can sign up at blog.logrocket.com slash tech meetups, uh, or just shoot me an email. You, you got the Zoom uh, invite for me. So uh, hopefully you, you see my email. Um, but yeah, you can sign up right here to any of these. I'm really excited for, for the Svelte one, something I, I'm not super familiar with. Um, and then I've, I've never even heard of the URL QL library. I'm probably not even saying that right. Um, <laughs> yeah, looking forward to those. And then, yeah, the obligatory, obligatory you know, this is brought to you by LogRocket. Um, you know, if you haven't heard of us before, it's a front end application monitoring solution for monitoring your React or whatever framework or library websites or web apps you have. Um, we have, you know, since the React kind of uh, topic today, I uh, just did want to highlight a couple of our really deep React integrations. You can actually go find sessions of people based on the Redux action they type or the uh, component they interacted with. Um, so there's just lots of really awesome stuff. And there's like, you know, because of that, we can do kind of um, component load times and all kinds of performance monitoring that's specifically for React. And I did just want to bring up too, this week, I'm really excited. We did release our uh, GA or not GA, our beta for, for mobile. Um, so if you have any mobile apps, uh, you can now you know record just like anything else and see exactly what people are doing in your mobile apps. Um, if you're interested to learn more, again, just shoot me an email, luke at logrocket.com or go sign up for a trial. Um, and with that, I will pass it over to John. Thank you for dealing with me. There we cool. go. I must have been intrigued by what a rage um, uh, click uh, is. I saw that in the, in the links. So yeah, I, I forget the exact, like how many clicks and how little of time uh, it needs to be. But um, we also have like, the opposite of rage click, like when something goes really well too, so. Okay. Happy click. Not, not just <laughs> cool. Um, excellent. Can everyone see my uh, my screen? Uh, actually, I can't see any of you. So if someone could just verbally say that they can see the screen, that would be amazing. Got, a, got three yeses. Cool, excellent. Thank you, marvelous. Um, Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, React uh, Structured Data and Search Engine Optimization. Um, this is uh, yeah a meetup talk with uh, with me, uh, John Riley, uh, with LogRocket, and uh, yeah, let's get started. 
first of all, uh, who am I? Um, my name's uh, John Riley, uh, Johnny Riley on, on the socials. Um, I blog quite a lot and I'm also involved in open source software in various different ways. Um, I'm fairly involved in the, the TypeScript uh, community. Um, uh, I work on definitely typed and, and TS loader amongst other things. In fact, I, I even do some work on the uh, React type definitions sometimes. Uh, but kind of like relevant to this talk, um, I contributed the uh, initial structured data support to Docusaurus, which is the, the blog engine that I use to power my own uh, blog. It's a, it's a very good uh, blog engine that comes out of uh, Facebook, and uh, I recommend it to you. And this talk is kind of like a, an investigation of what structured data is and um, and how that is applied uh, to React. Docusaurus, by the way, is, is incidentally uh, built on React, which is perhaps not surprising when you consider the provenance uh, of it. So. Let's go back to summertime. Um, so I uh, was in the need for, for brownies, um, uh, as you sometimes are. And because I didn't have a recipe to hand, I, I whipped out my um, laptop and searched for best brownie recipe. And um, up came this uh, in Google. And I've, I've cropped this, like, this picture here. Uh, and you can see that before actually all the search results, you know, the normal list of things that you normally see in a search engine uh, results list, there was this like carousel thing at the top with these individual recipes in, like one from BBC Good Food, one from Inspired Taste, um, and, like from different places. And looking at this, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like it's a really nice presentation of information. It's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for. Like I clicked on the first link there and we'll find out more about that a bit later on. The thing that struck me was that this looked remarkably um, structured, um, organized, uh, curated even. And the thing that caught me was that like, this is Google. Google is not generally known for curation, like they're known for automation. So how does this work? Clearly there's something like <clears throat> behind this, uh, what could it be? And it, this led me to like doing a little bit of an investigation. It turned out that there is something behind it and it's, uh, it's called structured data. And like I call it here the secret categorization language of Google, but that's that's like a generalization. Um, really, it's the categorization language of like all search engines. So you think about like search engines; these are classically powered by uh, like you know web crawlers out there that are like working their way through the interwebs, looking at each individual page, trying to understand like what it is, and then categorizing it somehow. And structured data, like that's a hard problem, by the way, like looking at like an individual website and trying to work out like what it is and like when you should present that to someone where they're doing a search. And structured data is actually kind of like giving a helping hand to the search engines and saying, hey, um, I am this sort of thing. It's like embedding uh, categorization information directly into your page such that it can be uh, meaningfully uh, used in a standardized way. And there's a home for this, uh, this standard. Um, it's called schema.org. So if you take yourself off to, to schema.org, and we'll share all the links and things at, at the end of this, by the way, you'll find that this is like the home um, curated by people from Google, Microsoft, Yahoo, Yandex, and others um, of different types of categories. So schemas uh, is what they're classically called. Uh, and these are the types of information that you can embed, embed in your different uh, web pages. So let's say you want to do a website, a web page about a person you'd probably put person information in there. Uh, if you remember at the start, we were looking for brownies, that was recipe information that we're seeing in there. There's all kinds of different types of information that you could put in there. And um, this is like the official uh, yellow pages lookup place that you would go to to like find out what the sheep of that information is. Now there's three kinds of formats to structured data. There's uh, microdata, RDFA, and JSON-LD. And like we're going to look at JSON-LD today for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's like it's officially Google's uh, like favorite version. Like they support all versions. So, like use what you like. Uh, and actually, interestingly, when I contributed um, uh, support to Docusaurus for structured data, I used uh, JSON-LD as like as the the mechanism. And that later got changed to being microdata um, because that kind of fits with like some of the existing like engineering choices uh, inside Docusaurus, but like either works. But we're gonna talk about JSON-LD because it's actually, it's definitely the one that's easier to, to directly understand as a human being, I would say. So let's look at what JSON-LD looks like. And what you can see in front of you right now, like this is JSON-LD and JavaScript developers amongst us, and I'm, I'm fairly sure there's gonna be some of them on the call, uh, will we'll recognize like what this is and what that looks like. So this is JSON-LD, uh, JSON as, as you all know is, uh, JavaScript object notation uh, is like has become a standard thanks to Douglas Crockwood's fine work. And the LD bit, um, that means linked data. 
And if you look at this, um, like you'll recognize like this just is um, JSON. That's what it is. It's a particular type of JSON. It's got this, this at context property and it's got this at type property. And if you concatenate the values of those together, schema.org and recipe, that takes you off to the, um, uh, to the, the schema that we're interested in, in this case, which is a, a recipe. And with that, this, uh, this lives inside your page, inside a custom uh, script tag. So if you look at the type here, it's application forward slash LD plus JSON. Uh, and so this is what it looks like to embed uh, JSON LD structured data inside a web page. Like, pretty simple, right? So now we're gonna look at what this looks like uh, in action, going back to the, the brownies once more. So when I did that search, up came this, uh, this beautiful carousel thing here. And it turns out this is a thing called rich results, uh, which is essentially Google taking um, structured data and presenting it in uh, a really lovely way, like to give like users, searchers, like a lovely digital experience, like this carousel essentially. And when I clicked uh, upon the uh, the entry in this carousel, I, I was taken to this this web page, and there's nothing um, particularly special about this web page. When you look at it, it just seems like a normal web page, but actually behind the scenes, it's um, it's hiding this. So when you fire up DevTools and look at the uh, the source code, you'll see inside there there's a lump of JSON LD. Uh, you'll see the application uh, LD JSON there. Kind of hard to read as you see it there. So let's clean it up a little bit and. Um, as you can see, here's um, the uh, the recipe uh, schema filled out. You can see there's the uh, uh, the, the context there. You can see the type. Uh, you can see the cooking time, the date modified. All of these things have been um, been populated um, such that they can be read by the likes of uh, Google and, and other search engines and used to create these rich results. And it's not, by the way, <clears throat> a secret, uh, like how, um, uh, how rich results work, uh, how Google use uh, structured data. It's actually really well documented uh, if you know where to look. So um, turns out there's this amazing uh, bit of documentation here, which I'm gonna show you quickly. And inside here, you can see <clears throat> that there's a certain like subset uh, of uh, types of structured data that Google will like take and use as the basis uh, of creating uh, sort of these great digital experiences. So when I contribute support to, uh, to Docusaurus, um, I think article was probably the type or, or, some, or a subtype of that because it's actually uh, interestingly, um, <clears throat> yeah, like it's got subclasses and subclasses, um, which, uh, yeah, so those people who, who like inheritance, like you will love <laughs> um, structured data. Yeah, and that's used to present this kind of rich results thing of like top stories there. Uh, there's carousels, and as you can see, that's kind of the thing that we saw earlier on. Uh, brownies, uh, in this case, it's uh, cookies, because uh, everyone has a sweet tooth, it, it turns out. So there's lots of different types of uh, digital experiences. There's events um, that can be pr driven off um, structured data. So if you're looking to enhance uh, the ability of your stuff, like showing up uh, to users, like reading into this, drilling into this is, is a worthwhile uh, spend of your time. Um, it's worth noting, by the way, that I, as far as I know, um, structured data doesn't actually improve your, um, your, your rankings in any kind of search results. But what it does mean is that you could feature inside of rich results um, circumstances. Um, so if you're developing like a web page and you want to put rich results into that, uh, how do you know you've got it right? Um, well, it turns out there's a tool out there that can help you, which is this wonderful uh, rich results test. And if I fire up the rich results test here, you can kind of see what it is. And it's really simple. There's like two parts to it. You can give a URL to it, which allows you to test a web page, or you can give it the code for your web page. And by the way, having the code in here is like, like that's really, really good because if you didn't, if you could only test URLs because it, like it wouldn't be able to see your local machine, like the feedback loop would be terrible. <laughs> so you'd have to like publish your website and then like crawl it and then, oh, I've got something wrong, make a change, republish. By having the code, it means you can test directly on your local machine, find out if you've got something right. And then when you've got something like, okay, this works, you can ship it and, uh, and you don't have to like, you know, waste all the time. So it's really cool that that's in there. But just to show you what it looks like when you pump something into this, um, I did a search uh, earlier on um, using this because it can take like up to two minutes sometimes for this to run. Um, and so this was, um, my blog, and you can see inside here, it's, yeah, so it turns out it's a type of blog posting. 
with a headline and URL and all these things populated. And so the rich results test allows us to understand if we've got it right, what it looks like. And it tells us if we get things wrong, like if things are missing, which is terrific. So we dive back once more uh, to, to here. And now we turn our attention to the, um, to the original uh, app that we built uh, during the, uh, the first blog post. So for those of you who have read the blog post and you may or may not have done, it ended up um, with this simple uh, app, the simple React app. It was created with Create React app and it was just a single page uh, deal and it added uh, structured data support to it. And it's still out there for us to go and take a look at. It's hosted by the magic that is um, uh, GitHub Pages. I love GitHub Pages, free hosting, yay. Uh, and here's our page. So as you can see, there's, there's not much to it. It doesn't seem to be doing a great deal, but let's, um, let's fire up DevTools and see what's going on. So you can see like the content of the page and that's marvelous and, and we can see all the things. But inside there, here's this wonderful uh, script type application LD JSON, and this is our structured data, like this is the thing. And again, we can make that more readable for us by just uh, copying that, dropping to the console, pasting that guy in, and if you expand that, you'll see, yeah, here's our structured data. Now, this is what's actually being produced. So how did that get into, into a React app? Let's dig into that. So here's, here's our page. And like all good engineers, let's, let's view source. And uh, we can be more sophisticated than uh, the view source because of the wonder that is, um, I'm actually not too certain what the name of this is, but it's you know effectively VS Code inside the context of, of a web browser, which is a magnificent way to uh, to, to demo um, uh, code. So I'm hugely grateful to the peeps at uh, Microsoft for doing this. So this is the source code for the um, for this website here, um, <clears throat> and yeah, it's just create React app, but we've taken the app JS um, component and we've replaced it with our own app JS uh, component. Uh, and by the way, we, we're doing this in, in JavaScript and uh, we could totally do this in TypeScript. Like it, it makes no odds, it's the same uh, kind of either way. So let's look at what we've got here. So inside our components, we've got this uh, JavaScript object literal here called article structured data. Um, and yeah, it contains the, the same information that you could see in the screen there. So you see that structured data for you. This is an article that demonstrates structured data, but like that maps to this structured data for you. Uh, this is an article that demonstrates structured data here. So you can kind of see like where this is going. Um, we use article structured data in two ways. So if we scroll down, and by the way, you don't have to use it in two ways. I've just chosen to for the purposes of, of this demonstration. Inside here, we're dotting off the article structured data to present like a heading and a subheading, uh, an image and some content here. So we're using this to like build up the HTML of the page. This here is kind of what you're seeing in here. But as well as that, and this is this is the um, the important bit, at the top there you can see there's a script type application forward slash ld plus json element, and inside there all we have to do is json stringify our uh, json literal here, and that renders out uh, the structured data such that it's actually picked up and read um, in the context uh, of of our particular web page. So you can see from this that you could apply this like kind of anywhere and using any kind of structured data that you wanted to. All you need to do is to find the, the schema that you're interested in. In this case, we've got an article, but you could, you could have like anything that you choose, build up a structure like this um, inside the context of a variable, and then create an element inside your page. And you can do more than one of these, by the way. Um, and um, we've just got one here, but it doesn't have to be that way and then just JSON stringify that out. And that's it, you have structured data inside the context uh, of your website, which is marvelous. And like, I really like it in talks when you can go beyond just like a demo to like a real thing. And um, <clears throat> I was scratching around where, where I could apply this and it occurred to me that, so in random uh, life facts, I have an aunt that's a Catholic nun. Uh, and years ago, she approached me and said, John, we need a website because nuns need websites, it turns out. And I'll make no claims for like the beauty of the website, but it's been there and it's been written like in pretty much anything that I can think of over the years. Uh, and right now it happens to be written in um, like uh, Docker um, and Node on the, on the back end. Uh, and it, it's, it's a React uh, front end. React is exactly what we're looking at here. So I thought, great, let's apply um, structured data to, uh, to my arts convent. Like, why not? 
Uh, and so true enough, like out there on the interwebs is this, this common website. And for giggles, here's the, um, here's the rich results test. It's very simple. So I'm hoping this is gonna run super quickly. We pump in test URL, it goes away. <clears throat> it reads the contents of the website and it's going to find like the nature of that, uh, of that website. It's gonna find the structured data in there and present it to us. And because that's taking slightly longer than I would have hoped, let's have a quick look at what that would have looked like in terms of the PR that implemented this. So if we look at the PR, again, there's a bit of noise around it, but mostly it's just this creating a, um, a JavaScript object literal of this um, type that I discovered called the Catholic church type, which seems like close enough to a convent. So you know, why not, you know, you only live once. And inside here, we've got our script type application LD JSON. And we're JSON stringify, JSON stringifying that inside there. And if we look back here, yep, you can see it success, successfully detected it. Peculiarly, it calls it a, a local business. Um, uh, but then when we drill into it, like you can detect, like here's the information, it's all there. And, but what we're seeing here, by the way, this is, um, <clears throat> this is the rich results test and that's magnificent. I wanted to go like one step further. Like ideally, you want to take uh, the uh, the structured data that's created. We're seeing the structured data here. This is really a structured data test rather than a rich results test. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could actually see some rich results off the back of that? So yesterday, uh, I decided, okay, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to add um, event support to um, to the website as well because events we know are treated uh, especially uh, by Google and show up in in search results there. And this is the PR that uh, that added it. And again, <clears throat> you can see we're just creating an event structured data. The event in this case happens to be Christmas, yay. Um, and then that's rendered out inside the uh, the context here. So the diff's a bit noisy, but somewhere inside here, there is also the uh, the JSON stringify, oh, there it is, uh, of the event structured data. And having that thing there, like theoretically means that when we go to, to Google and just do a search, so if I go to Google here, I'm going to kill the dev tools here and just do a search for poor Claire's events. Um, and this is where it goes slightly wrong because um, also you're right, depending on how you look at it. Unfortunately, Google haven't yet recrawled uh, my aunt's website. <laughs> and so we can't see the event showing up. But wonderfully, somewhere out uh, in the United States of America in Arizona, I think, I'm guessing that's what AZ stands for. There is, who knew, uh, another poor Claire's convent, and they do have an event. Uh, so someone out there is already using this um, and kind of like demonstrating my point for me, um, which is which is wonderful. And yeah, this is the uh, that's the end of the um, uh, the end of the, the talk. Um, there's a number of links here which um, uh, we're going to share as well. Um, if you've got any questions, that uh, please do uh, feel free to, to ask me, and I will I'll do my level best to respond to them. Let me. Uh, stop sharing so that I can I can see you. There we go. You'll be able to see everyone. But um, one question just like, I didn't understand mm. the second bit was like, is this like kind of necessary? And that, that was one question I had like with, you know, a lot of apps are behind a sign up and, you know, like mm. explicitly don't allow kind of bots to crawl because I mean, the bots can actually sign up. Um, mm. And you think like, other reasons why I, I, I kind of thought of a couple, but I'm just curious what you think. Just a couple other reasons why to actually implement this for your applications um, behind kind of a sign up rather than like a you know a publicly crawlable website. So like, yeah, for, for the reasons that that you've you said, Luke, I think I probably wouldn't bother if it was behind a sign up. Like I think this only really makes sense if it's like a, a, an an anonymously accessed uh, website that can yeah. be crawled. Because like, like effectively the value that you're getting from it is that out there search engines like uh, will be crawling this and like making uh, categorization choices uh, like off the back of it. So yeah. probably it being, if it's behind a, like behind a firewall, it will probably, sorry, not behind, if it's behind a sign up thing, like though that information will probably never be exposed unless you've like in some way given um, uh, like crawling in uh, like uh, Facebook or, or whatever access to, um, see, what does it say Facebook? But yeah, um, yeah, so probably not. All right, I, I've got two and you can tell me if I'm crazy. Um, mm -hmm, go for it. First thing is like, I know for a fact that like a lot of LogRocket users, and then I do this the same too, is they actually search in Google to go find a part of your app. Um, 
and this this kind of just made me think like we should actually add structured data to a, a sandbox so if people want to go to the settings like i do this with like linkedin because their search isn't very good um yeah you can actually you know expose some of your app behind a firewall that you really want people to get to to either actually sign up there or access their own kind of app um mm -hmm. part of the app that they're looking for and then the other one was like i write a lot of my own crawlers mm. If you've got a really big giant app like a lot of the crawling libraries just use the exact thing we just showed and what what google crawls so the, that, those, those are two things i thought um, yeah yeah crazy. yeah like i would imagine that like because this is like a standardized thing and has been around for, for quite a while if you're using like third-party libraries to do crawling um then like probably they are going to make use of that so, like, i certainly I, I, I would be not surprised if they didn't um yeah. if they did uh, yeah, so I think so. Yeah. All right. And then we've got a, three questions in the chat for things like an event on a website with multiple pages. Should I add it to the home page? That's a good question. Like, does it only have to be on the event route? OK, or yeah, that's that's a good question. So, yeah, the um, the event thing's interesting, actually, because it turns out that like Google are kind of opinionated when it comes to events like they really want you to have like one. Uh, event per page. So if you're gonna, if you want to have multiple events, they want you to, they want you to have multiple pages, each with an events type in there. And um, so yeah, like you could put it on the home page, um, but like I, I would say, um, it's probably better to have like, uh, like various different events pages which you link off from there and have like the the event structure data for each in there. In fact, funnily enough, the um, I <laughs> I'm intending to do that to my aunt's website, but yeah, at time I, I will do it at some point. Yeah. Um... I'm not sure. I think this is like a question about nested components. Do I need okay. to add this component on top of my other apps components? Yeah, this is so actually this is one of the things that I really, really like about um, the way that you can use JSONLD is it can go anywhere. Like you don't, it doesn't have to be like in the head uh, or, or it doesn't have to be in a particular place in the body or anything like that. It can be anywhere. So you can um, you, you can, if you wanted to have it just in one page, you could just put it in like that components page. If you wanted to have it um, like covering a whole site, you could put it at like the top level and like every single page would effectively have structured data. It might be the same structured data unless you did some uh, clever switching on that. Um, but uh, yeah, so the wonderful thing is like, it's your choice. You don't need to, you don't, doesn't need, doesn't need to be here. It doesn't need to be there. You can choose where you, where you want to put it. It's, it's down to you. Nice. Yeah. I didn't know that because yeah, with like the static approach or like meta tags, those will have to be in the head. They're very annoying to go edit. So this is much better. Um, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And then last one, um, when we're doing client-side routing, have a blog, how can we have the article pages structured data be dynamic? Will SEO crawler wait for the JS to make database call before it starts the crawl? Any recommendations on this? So yeah, like just timing mm. of, of, of actual render and, and all that. Yeah, so like, um. It's a good question. And the answer is I'm not totally sure. Like what I do know is that like some years ago, because of like like the, the increase in like single page applications, like the likes of like Angular, Knockout, um, React, Svelte, Vue, like the list is now, now endless. But um, uh, because that became more of a thing, Google did make a switch to starting to support JavaScript inside the context um, of web pages when they're for their crawlers, which historically they just like scanned HTML. So now uh, I believe, at the very least Google, I would be surprised if the others aren't doing it also, will like kind of wait for um, for your pages to render uh, and like read them that way. So I think that like the client side routing stuff will probably uh, still work. Dynamic pages will still work. Um, but yeah, like I, I'm, I'm like, I'm actually not, not like, um, I'm not, not Google, so I don't know for, for sure, but, uh, but I think, it, I think it does work. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess, I guess one thing you do is just use that, use that tester. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, use the tools and like see, yeah, plug plug your URLs into those tools and see what you get back. Like it will. That's that's the best suggestion. Yeah, Luke, what Luke said. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's all the questions. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Like I said, uh, we've got at least three more of these coming up in November, and then lots more to come. Um, if you have any feedback, just shoot me an email, Luke at LogRocket.com. And thanks for joining, John. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks everyone. Love to see you. Well, not see you, but <laughs> be around you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers.